All right, so today we're going to be putting a flush mount light in the ceiling of this up rental uh, property. This is a bedroom. It only has a seven foot ceiling because there's another building built uh, or another floor built on top of this. So what we're going to do is we are going to actually put a light in, a switch and some wiring. First thing we need to do is get the center of the room. Now I measured five and a half or uh, nine and a half feet this way and nine and a half feet this way, which was 114 inches. We cut that in half to 57. So it would be 57 forward, 57 to my right, 57 to my left, and 57 back should get us about here for our center point. Now, after I found the center point on the ground, I'm going to lay something right here, and then I'm going to try to measure the top also 57 on each um, of the different spreads of the area. And then we're going to go ahead and put our point there. But we don't know where the rafter is on the inside of the ceiling. But since I'm already doing work in the hallway, I got a little trick for you and I'm going to show you what we did. All right, so this is the bedroom of the rental property. And <laughs> hey, little. Um, if you notice on the ceiling, there's no light, like no permanent light fixture. Today, we're going to be putting a light fixture and um, wiring through the ceiling here. So I'm going to measure what I think is the center. Let me see if I can get a little down here so you can see kind of what we're working with. So with the square. So we're going to try to we're going to go across this way and see how many feet and then across this way, see how many feet, and then meet in the middle. We're gonna put a light fixture there, uh, run it across the wall and then down, and where that switch is, we're gonna put a switch for the light. Now this switch is for like an old school, you turn this on, hey Wolf. <laughs> you turn this on and it'll ignite a plug and then the lamp post will go on in the room and then you turn it off. And I don't know why they did this because this was part of this building was built in 1980s so it just doesn't look right to me but we're gonna go ahead and uh, get into some of this drywall now normally you would have to figure out where you're gonna put it and then usually cut a hole in the drywall now if you're gonna put the light and then run it straight across like this if your rafters go this way, then usually you only have to cut an end hole here, slide it all the way down, and then figure out where you're gonna put the light on that side. But here, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I already have an opening on this side. So I had to run a 240 from the main breaker along the ceiling and then down to put an oven in. So since I have this open, I'm going to put the switch next to this one, the double switch here, run it up and open, and then through the hole that's already cut here, however many over, and then slide the wire along the ceiling so we don't have to make any cuts on this side of the, the drywall. Okay, so we were measuring right here, and if we look straight up on this ceiling, there is no ceiling light. But there is a switch over here. Now, in these old school buildings, they used to have a switch. You would turn this on and off, and it would turn a uh, socket on, and you would have a lamp in there. Now, a lot of these lower ceilings don't have any lamps, so that you don't bust anything when you're moving furniture, bring it in here. I just don't like that situation, so we are gonna put a lamp here. But here's what a trick I wanted to show you. So since we're redoing this um, room in here, I had to run a 240 line all the way through. You see the bigger line here? All the way through and then down so we can put an oven in, a 240 oven. Now, while I have this drywall open, there's no reason for me to cut drywall on this side to bring the bring the uh, Romex down to put a switch in for this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the hole here, slide the Romex through the wall, 
to come out on this side, just a little farther than the room. And then you see there's already some holes cut for the wiring. So I'm just gonna slide the Romex through, slide it through again, and then drop it down the wall here. And then on the other side, all I have to do is cut a small uh, hole here and connect it. Now, I just got lucky that I was doing this on the other side. If you um, aren't doing any other projects, you don't have your ceiling cut open, you are going to have to cut a piece. I would just cut it on this side, um, wherever the raptor is, and drop it down. Now, the only bad thing is, if your raptors are going this way, you can run the wire all the way back, but then you have to cut out a piece of drywall to go through the wood to drop down. Unfortunately, uh, for some people, theirs doesn't go this way and they have to cut that whole piece out and go circle, 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 loop the wire through, 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 then drop it and then put the drywall back on. So if we were out here and we were going this way, you'd have to cut this long runner of drywall, do all the circles through, but in this situation, we don't. So let's actually get some work done. I'm gonna go ahead and measure on the ceiling where it's at, but here I found a little predicament. So I am gonna show you that the 58, uh, 57, 57, 57 doesn't work because I have to go 53. Now, this is why. If I do 57, 57, it's gonna come up to this point right here where there's two um, joists and then like another inside brace joist and there's just not a lot of room. And the 58 would be about right where that white line is right there. And it wouldn't have anything to hold on to. So I'm a little nervous to try to push it through here. So we're gonna go 53 on this side and 60 on the other. So the light's gonna be three inches off, but so it can come through this nice, big, I wanna push the wire through this nice, big opening and then go through the hole. So I measured from this opening back, which came to 53, 58 was just about here. So I was kind of upset about it, but hey, that's what happens. So let's go ahead and cut some uh, hole in the ceiling in here and start pushing this Romax through. can't get the unfortunately the hole is too small here or they have some kind of pin in the back locking these down I can't get the extra line in so we're gonna cut a hole right next to this with our drill and it's just gonna look like this so we have this hole three quarters to open up As you can see, it's making a pretty good hole. We're going in at an angle just because I don't want to cut any more drywall open. I want to leave the hole as, the drywall hole as small as possible. I'm going to go ahead and get a fresh battery and cut through this. And I'm going to show you how to feed the line through. All right, so we got this hole cut out now. Um, we can put a new piece of drywall. We have like a half an inch on this side, half inch this side, half inch this side. And then this runner runs as far as it'll go so we can't put anything there, but I know a little trick that you can put a piece of wood here before you put the drywall up and put a couple screws in it and it'll hold that piece of wood. Then you can drill into that. So you have like a brace piece of wood. And I'm gonna show you that trick, but first we're gonna get this light in. Now I like this one with the nails because it's never gonna fall down no matter what, moisture, old drywall, whatever, this is now gonna be in the, the wall here. 
So you don't wanna go all the way up to the wall and make this flush because your drive, it looks like this drywall is five eighths, which is terrible. I only have half inch to replace. So we're gonna to have to slap some putty in here as well. But we want it to touch across this way, flat, you know? So once we get it to where we like it, I'm gonna start just nailing, tapping it in. I don't really have room to tap there. It's gonna to have to be a little bit off center. Didn't wanna be, but. Now, normally I would have one of those little bubble pieces to put on here to make sure it's flat, but I can see it. Okay, hang it off just a little bit. There it is. these nails all the way through which you can but I just want to make sure they're stable as long as it's stable it's good for me you know no one's gonna be pulling on this or tap, dra dra grabbing this there's no uh, fan gonna be on here to give it weight or anything and uh, it looks like they just put this plate in here I can't believe they did that okay. that, is, that is good and we're gonna pop one of these little holes out, stick our wire through. We're gonna make another hole here, because now we've closed up our hole, we can't get to it. So we'll just make another hole right here, uh, finish through. We'll pull the line out, go through, it'll run all the way around the wall, and then we'll make a switch on the other side. Hopefully everything's gonna go good, but as you can see, things just pop up out of the blue. I mean, how was I supposed to know the one place in this Raptor they put this divider wall to hold this electric was gonna be right here. You know, That's the most stupid place to put this because if you're ever gonna put a light, you're gonna put it in the center of the room. Why would you block that? Now we've cut the hole out so we can get to one, two, three walls to put a piece up in here. Um, and we cut the piece I cut it a little bigger because I wanted to make sure it would fit and then I just trim quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch till it fits in perfectly. Uh, once it fits in perfectly like this, this will be the piece that goes up. Now we're going to measure from the corner of the drywall, not the wood, because this goes over the wood. The corner of the drywall to here, the corner of the drywall to here, the corner of the drywall to here, and then from here to here, and we're gonna get a square, and we're gonna make the circle inside, and we're gonna cut a small circle out first and match it up, and then we'll cut around the circle on the inside. So it's gonna take a different blade. We can't use that big thick blade. We need a smaller blade to cut around. But let's go ahead and get our measurements done first, put it on our drywall, make a pilot hole, Put it up here so we can see where we're at and go ahead and go for it. Now I know a lot of you will just say, oh, it's here. Let's just make a pilot hole here and go for it. But I wanna make sure for people that have never done this before, if you've never done drywall, you need to practice doing these measurements. As you get a little more used to it, you can kind of figure things out on your own. But on this channel, this is for the DIYers who are new and beginning. So let's go ahead and get some work done. So now that we have our piece of drywall cut to fit here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some measurements. So I put this against the drywall here and I came in and it's at about a little under four and a little under eight. So I did four and a half. I did four and a half because it will be inside the hole. And it's a little under eight, so I did seven and a quarter. Four and a half, seven and a quarter. Now we're inside the hole. We don't want to go outside the hole because then we need a new piece of drywall. And then from here to here is, is a half an inch, so I did a full inch. And then from here to here is four and a half, so I did four. So then I made all the marks on my drywall here. 
you know, the, the little over, the little under, the half, and the, this, right? So I want to make sure I'm in the hole. So if we slide back, we should be in this hole completely. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole in the circle of this, of this square that I made where all the points I connected together, all the points, I made a square. We're going to make a circle in the square and we're going to cut that small circle out first. So I'm just going to make a small circle in there. When I, when I get down, I'll make a little nicer one. We're going to cut this small circle out then that circle is going to be here. Then we could just go along the outside of the trim. Don't try to cut this perfectly your first time because if you cut a half an inch over on one side or the other, now you made a hole and now you need a new piece of drywall. So let's go cut this small hole out and start getting it mocked up for where we need to be. So I made some holes. I made a hole, but I want you to know that I push in. If this is the piece of drywall that's gonna be seen, you never wanna push the piece out because I'm gonna show you why. On the back here, it was still connected a little bit and I didn't know when I pushed it through, but it ripped some of the tape off or some of the paper off. Now, if you rip the paper off the back, who cares? Because it's gonna be hidden up inside there. But if you rip the paper off the top and it rips far, now you've ruined the piece of drywall or you have to put spackle and try to fix it and do all that. So if you ever cut a little piece out, remember, always push it through the back because it doesn't matter if you rip the back of the drywall. Now let's kind of mock this up. And we get a little mock up and we're perfectly in the hole right there. Perfectly in the hole. So I would put two screws in here just as a mock up and then get my small blade and cut around this until it's perfect to go up in there. And that's just what we're gonna do. So now that we've got our hole drilled all the way through, we're gonna go ahead and start feeding our Romax in. And this was the easiest way since this board was here, instead of feeding it the other way and just making the small circle, could have never happened because we found out that they put this block in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start feeding it through, try to keep bending it straight. So it goes this way, cause you don't want it to be bent and hooked and start catching onto the wall. And we're hitting something on the other side, so let's go out in the hallway and see what happened. Okay, so now we're going to keep feeding this through because this side is already cut for the light. So we're going to be very, very close now to what we need. I need to pull it out the other side. And then we're going to take a this Romax and then feed it through the one I see so you have to pop one of these open here we're going to stick this wire up through here and pull it down and then we're going to connect the light right here and through the wall through the other side because we already had it cut this is the wire that came out so now we're going to take this wire and feed it through these big holes here this one and this one through the wall, pull it out, and then we're gonna drip it down the wall here. And then we should only have to cut a little hole here in between the studs and be able to either put a double switch or remove this switch and put a this switch in there or do whatever we wanna do. Right, Meadow? Okay, so now that everything's taken care of here, we just need to put the drywall up and then wire the light in. You would follow this down and then you still have to be able to cut through the, the wood here to be able to drop the line down and put a plug in. So either you're going to have to cut a section of drywall out here between the studs down so you can drill up and grab the line and to put a plug in. 
but instead I'm going to show you a naked wall to make it a little easier for you. Now on the other side over here, so on the other side here, there's some really nasty wallpaper. It looks like it's from the eighties and when you tear it off, it just rips the drywall off with it. There's no saving this. So I'm going to take the whole wall out anyway, so I can add a few plugs and change up some stuff that was done here before. But um, what I would do is, since the wire came from right here, I would just go straight down to where this plug is if I had a plug in the wall already. So I decided since this plug works that socket, like for a lamp, um, we're going to go just above that because I would have to knock all this out and put a double socket here and do everything. But I just grabbed one of these boxes and I went up about two inches and now the I did an outline. So we're gonna cut the drywall on this side and put the plug through so it's flush, well almost flush, and we're gonna nail it in. And then we're gonna take the wire here and wire that into this. And then we're going to take a small piece of uh, wire and wire it down into this from from the hot the power going in to our plug so we're going to make a jump union here and then that's going to go into this all right so now that i've got everything marked out and i pulled the this had a staple in it like this right here i pulled the staple out so i can move this out of the way i'm going to go ahead and get my tool and cut it Tool's a little loud, so I'm going to cut it in fast time for you. Okay, so since we had the hole there, all I did was kind of push the box in. It's a very snug fit because I just went around. And then you just want to push it in a little bit, not too far. And then come on this side and see about where you're sticking out. So I try to just get a couple of millimeters inside the drywall here. I never try to make it too much because I don't want it to stick out. Like this one's inside a little bit. Sometimes I do it like that. Someone else did this one. This one is pretty flush, flush. I think it's almost too much, but I'm not gonna fix it. But ours, we're gonna get to right here. And then it's got these two pin nails and I'm just gonna hammer those into the wall. And then we're gonna start this electrical work. So I know a lot of people like to nail it all the way in, but I've got it nailed almost all the way in to a couple of millimeters on top. I'm going to go ahead and press this one down as well all the way in, but I leave this little bit because if I ever take the drywall off or I want to change the plug location or put something else here, or take the wall out, I can go ahead and grab this with the claw hammer, pull out both nails, save the box and just buy two nails for a couple of pennies instead of paying the dollar or dollar 40 for the box. Just a little tip for you. All right, so now I have power in these wires here, power in, and this goes to the light. I have to put the socket or uh, the switch in. I just have to go buy one. I thought I had one, uh, so we'll do that later. But let's move on to this. Now I put my drywall piece back up that I'm gonna put in, and I measured approximately where the uh, gray piece was that is up there, the light holder. But I made the hole smaller because if you make it too big and it's off place, then you got to cut a whole new piece of drywall. So I made it small and then I put a long nail on each end to hold it in place and twisted the wires over. And now I'm just going to take the tool and cut around it a little more open at a time until it slides right up in and then I'm going to lock it in. We're going to do the drywall around it and then we're going to install the light.
And now that we got it in and cut, I'm just gonna put the small drywall screws in all the corners and make sure everything's secure. And then I'm gonna start putting in the tape and the uh, spackle, and then we can mount the light after that. But all this needs to be fixed and taped up and, and done first. precaution you don't have to put this many but you know I just I just want to make sure okay. and there she is all right so since we had time and this is our uh, rental property I put some joint compound or spackle um, in the cracks and you can only put a wee little bit because it's you don't want it to drip out or come down and the only reason that I did that is because when I put the tape over this, the tape won't just fall up in there. So um, it's a little thicker now. So I can go over it one more time, then sand it this afternoon, and then tomorrow put the tape on. Uh, but I'm gonna go and fill around on there and, and see first. And then we're gonna go ahead and tape this up and be ready to go. All right, so I'm just gonna go over it. I'm gonna drop cloth on the ground so it doesn't matter. We drop a little bit. Just gonna fill the, the the gaps a little bit. I know I'm a little being a little sloppy here. I'll show you why. Don't mind my technique. No, everybody else has got their own little technique. I'm gonna take a little piece of our tape and put it on. Now, normally with the paper tape, you have to do what I just did and lay a little bit of stickiness down because the paper tape doesn't self stick. Uh, and then you have to put this um, on afterward and then put the, put the spackle, more spackle on it. But this is self sticking tape uh, that I just put on. It's the newest stuff and it's kind of like go through. So you just stick it to the wall without using any spackle as glue. Uh, then as you push it on, it's pleated, which means it has holes in it. So the drywall will fill in, but I just didn't trust it enough because the gaps were so um, big. And then now I'm just gonna go over it, you know? Man, it's hard to do upside down. I'm always, I'm always messing up here, the upside down. I don't like the upside down. So I just kind of slap some on and get it messy. And then I try to go over it and smooth it out a little bit. Just to cover the tape. I just want to cover the tape. I just want to make sure the tape is on there. I know professional drywallers are going to be like, oh, you don't do it like that. You, you put it on, then you get the other spatula, the spreader, and then you spread it out, and then you do this, do that, and you're done. But I just... I like to do it in stages. It dries faster this way. I got a client next week moving into this apartment. It needs to be done. So I put a wee little bit on like that just to cover everything. It'll dry in like two, three hours. I'll come back in and sand this flat and then I'll get the bigger spackle knife that'll go all the way across, probably four inches. And I'll put one last one on and then all the, do it all the way around. And then that's all we gotta do. Sand it up, hit it with some primer or some, some paint, and then uh, put the light in, and then we're gonna paint the whole room. All right, so I just put the tape on and I just went over it with the little one here, and uh, just to get it up there. And now I'm just gonna splat some on around a little more. It's only been like 20 minutes, it's still wet. Um, so I can take this longer one and kind of feather it out and that way it'll kind of spread more and I won't have to sand and do it again. But since it's on the ceiling, you can't just throw a bunch of this stuff up on there because then it starts to like weigh in different places. I mean, I've seen people do it and it worked. I just, I'm not that guy. <laughs> not that guy. I'm not trying to make a mess. I just do a little bit at a time. And, uh, whew, man. see? So we're, well, I'm kind of 
kind of like pasting in a bunch now, you know? I'm pasting a bunch up there. And just, just kind of getting it on there. Decent, not too crazy. And now we're gonna take our other one and we're gonna pull it down. So, we're just gonna go this way now. flat so now we have some putty on there and we'll go a little lighter and we'll spread it out keep spreading it out okay so now it's spread it out good but we can still see our tape through so I'm gonna try I think I need to get a little more spackle on there. We're gonna go one more time, do a little more spackle, make it a little thicker. So then once we sand, we'll get a nice buff and feather. And after I get it pretty good, I get the finishing blade and then I just go over it. And just slide it over. So, I know I can still see a little bit of the tape there. But that's okay because that's a lot of spackle on your ceiling. I mean, it's not a lot. It's probably a, like a ball full that you've spread out to make even. But I'm going to let this dry because I don't want to just keep putting it on because if it's heavier in some places and lighter in some places, it might dry differently anyway. This might suck up in a little bit when the water comes out to make it solid. So you never want to just cake too much. This is now the first done. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side with the larger one first and then the finishing one. And then I'll just touch, boom, boom, one, two, both end caps. We'll let it dry for four or five hours. If you need it to dry immediately, you can get a hair dryer in here. I would put it on low. You don't want to put it on high because the higher you, faster you dry it, the more it might crack. You don't want to do that. Dry it on low, keep it away like 10 inches, just let it be warm. Or put a heater just in the room, a little space heater in the room, close the door and just let the temperature go up to like 85, 90 in the room or whatever and let it dry for like two or three hours. And then you're going to go over it. You're going to put some on again and then just go over it with the finishing and then give it the final sand down. All right, so we got everything mounted, we got all our drywall done. Now we come to the final fixture. So I got this um, box light flush mount kit. It's a dual bulb because I wanted to have light, more light um, in the larger room since it's 10 by 10. And we're just gonna go ahead and see what's in this thing. We got some destructions here. And let's see. All right. So this is the bottom panel. And like I said, we got the brush nickel finish. I like the brush nickel. I'm trying to keep everything the same in the, uh, in the house. So then these will be your lead wires, your, um, your uh, black, white, and uh, ground. So your load, your neutral, and your ground. We're gonna put that on and connect that to the wall. Then we should have a glass in here. It's gonna be a piece of glass. Yeah, we're listening to really good music right now, but I can't play music because YouTube keeps gigging me. And I love listening to these techno songs while I'm working, but I just won't. Ah, this is what I was looking for. Okay, so here's your accessory kit. So make sure that yours always comes with an accessory kit for the light. Don't throw it out because if we weren't paying attention, we'd have lost it. So then after we put everything up, this will be the glass, the frosted glass, so it doesn't hurt your eyes. And that'll go on the light here. After, after here, after mounting. Then we have our screw piece in here and our little plate and our little knob. Let's get some of this stuff going. 
All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this bracket on. And when you put a new cup or whatever hold, light holder, fixture holder in here, it's gonna have two on each side holes that's available to go in. So I would, you have to make sure that the screw head of the ground is facing down. So I have accidentally put it like this and had to unscrew it and put it back. So they gave us two little Phillips heads here. So we're just gonna go ahead and put one in. So on the slide part here, you're gonna go ahead and use that slide wherever it matches up, up to the top of the, uh, the light holder. So I, I have it in position here, and I'm just gonna put the screw through the slide. So I'll give you a close up look so you know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna go ahead and put one in and then we'll do the close up so you can see it compared to the other one. So you're just gonna take your Phillips head, and screw that all the way in. And now let's take a look at what we're actually working with here. So you can see the slider has the screw in it and then there's two screw openings here that you're gonna connect the light to depending on where you position the light. The light does not have to be perfectly mounted. So if it's 12 inches, it doesn't have to be six inches, six inches, six, six. It could be off to the side an inch or off to the side an inch here. And that's why they give you these options to use these different screw holes. You could move it over, uh, say an inch up this way or an inch this way as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one, see the two holes open? I'm gonna go ahead and put this screw here into that, locking this bracket in place. And then we're gonna get the light base Put it up, pull the wires through, and show you how to lock the base onto this and wire it all up. Now you get these two long ones. So in these two holes that you can go to, you gotta put these two long ones in, not all the way, because when you put this plate up, it'll slide through the teardrop and then lock in, and then you can screw it in. If you put it in too tight, you're not gonna find it on this or if you try to go through this hole to find that, you're never gonna find it through this insulation. So first thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna connect some of this electric. All right, so we're ready to connect the, the wires into the mount here. Uh, normally, yeah, I, I would make the little loops here or and hook it on if it had that, like a screw-in method, or you would leave this straight and then you would take the two wires and crimp them together and then put a wire nut on there. But this has a totally new, different thing. I've never even seen this one before. I just had to go look it up. So where the wire is in the back here, you just slide the straight wire in and it makes a connection and you don't need to crimp them anymore because these light fixtures come with a braided line. It's not Romax. And the Romax is a solid line. So if you go solid to solid, it's easy to twist because it's two dense metals. Um, it's easy to do braided to braided because they're two soft metals to wrap around each other. But when you go from this, the old school, to this, very difficult. But now they came out with this new clip. So all you have to do is put this in. So we're gonna cut the ends, the hoops off of this and make it straight right here. I'm gonna connect it right in and then we're gonna put the grounds together and put this base on. So let's just cut these off real quick right in front of you. Okay, so now that we've cut the end piece off, what we're gonna do is we're going to take this neutral white wire and connect it to the butt connection of the white wire. You never want to cross your colors. So we'll just push that up in here in the back. Now I'm, I'm new with this connection too, so bear with me. We're doing this together.
And I guess that's about it. It's, it's in there pretty tight, so let's see. All right, so let's cut this black one and get that connected. Wrap this ground up. I guess there's no butt connection for the ground, which is kind of stupid. Why would you give it to us for the power and the neutral, but you wouldn't do it for the ground? You, you know what I mean? Now we're doing the same thing where we have to do the Romax to the ground and kind of wrap it around. But we're going to use this screw nut right here as a little bit of a trick and just wrap this around and then put a hook through here so everything is ground the way it's supposed to be. So let's go ahead and get on this power wire here. So we're just gonna take our wire dikes, pull this out a little bit, cut this end off. Now we have that straight piece that we need. And then we're gonna take the butt connection. So remember, the white one's already used. We only have one left, so we go black to black. We're gonna get it to the angle that we need it and go ahead and connect that in. And just kind of push it and wiggle it around in there, I guess is the best way. And it makes a lock. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is probably the closest thing for electric to what the shark bite is to the plumbing. And if you've been watching our plumbing um, videos, you see that we've been using a lot of that shark bite new technology stuff. So it's not permanent. You can take it in and take it out. If you don't like the way this is, then you can squeeze this and release, pull it out, and you don't have to cut any wiring. It's a lot safer, and you can change the light out whenever you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this around the ground here. I'm gonna go ahead and screw it onto this piece and then start aiming this light up. When I get the base on, I'm gonna come back and show you how to put this middle section in and measure that so that you can get the glass on perfectly without breaking it. And we'll be right back. So as you can see here, I now have the ground easy braided wire wrapped all around this little makeshift hook that I made. I'm gonna unscrew this ground and hook that on so it connects both. <laughs> So I got the hook in, I'm going right there. Now we're good, right? Everything's good, everything. Oh, this one came out. Everything's good, everything's connected. Everything's in. Okay. All right, now we gotta try to find these two screws underneath the base here, which is always a fun game. So at this time, you should probably go take a break and have one of your buddies play with this thing like a Rubik's Cube for like 20 minutes. All right, so after about six months of trying to find these two bolts, we finally ventured back down here to try it again after much counseling and a vacation. But no, seriously, those are like the hardest things to find through the insulation and all the stuff. So now that I have them and I pushed it over, I'm gonna tighten them up enough, but you don't want this to bend. You just want this, just want this to be tight. See how it moves? Just tight. So kind of hold it in place and tighten it so it doesn't fall out. Once you do that, then um, we're gonna put this center cap piece on and we're gonna put the glass on and see how far we need to adjust this center piece so the glass will just fit on perfect. Then we're gonna put the glass piece on, the middle piece will be on already and we're just gonna put the bottom cap and then we'll turn the light on and everything will be groovy. All right, so we just finished our light. We put the last little piece of glass on and the stem and the piece on the outside. It looks beautiful. We painted all the wall and everything. And just like that, there it is. Glass, everything works. It's beautiful. 
Let's flip the camera around and get a little video just close so you can see what it looks like. And I'm telling you, you don't need an electrician. You can save hundreds of dollars by doing this stuff on your own. I think I spent 15 bucks for the light, like maybe $20 for the Romax for the wiring. And for the switch in the buck in the box, I think was 20. So maybe 50 bucks total and you could put a light in and you can't even get an electrician to come to your house and not even do work. Just come to your house for under $125. So give us a like, subscribe, uh, hit notifications all. We're coming out with all kind of great new videos to fix your house up or if you have a project coming up. If you want to see something done, please leave that in the comments down below and we'll get a video out for you. And there she is on. How's the look? Light and the switch. Looks beautiful. I like the brushed nickel. It's going to match everything. It's all going to be um, like a theme in the in the property so it looks great